Hey guys, welcome back to Sword of Mana. Last time, I left you off on something of a cliffhanger when I uh, went to fight the Light Cyclops for some Wisp level ups. And uh, this time, let me just uh, finish off these enemies real quick. Oh, I got a sword level up. This time, I'm all finished with the grinding for the Wisp level ups. So, Wisp, um, the Hero's Wisp level is now at level 30. Let me just go into the menu real quick to show you. So right about here. There you go. So if you look in the upper right, you'll see that Wisp is at level 30. Now that means that Healing Light has a standard healing um, of 30 HP. And then um, it adds 1 HP for every level of Wisp that you have. So right now, the Hero's Healing Light spell will heal 60 HP. So I did that in the um, intermittence between the episodes. I also found Niccolo in the Mushboom Forest and bought 50 Stardust Herbs from him in, um, in order to further his side quest. So um, I did that in between the episodes and now I'm all ready to go for the next part of the game. Now um, for Niccolo, the thing that you'll need is you'll want to have about a thousand lucre uh, to spare when you go ahead and buy stuff from him because um, that's how much 50 Stardust Herbs will cost from him. And the other thing for Wisp, the reason why I um, leveled Wisp up to level 30 is because of the fact that the hero's, um, well, I mean, the hero has 111 MP right now, as you can see right here. But the um, thing is, is that when I pl when I um, figured out how I was going to do this when I earlier before I did this actual um, playing this game, like when I was doing the test play and I was figuring out how to do everything. Um, the hero, I realized that the hero is not going to be as high on MP as, say, the heroine is, so he can't afford to chain cast healing light a, uh, a couple of times, especially at, a, at later points in the game when he might need it. So I figured it'd be easier to just take advantage of the fact that the light cyclops is on the pa hero's path to Westlake and get all of his wisp grinding done right there because I mean heroin's gonna be using Wisp over the course of the game so she'll get the levels for healing light um, for the added healing light and all of that stuff over the course of the game but the um, hero will probably not um, because he won't be using magic as often I mean as you can see I have bow level and sword levels but I other than Wisp I have exactly absolutely zero um, levels on any of my other spells so the hero is going to be more um, oriented towards weapons, that's why I figured it'd be easier to just get the grinding done now. So that that way I can just uh, go ahead and fix him up for later in the game without having to do any grinding otherwise. So now we're back at Gaia's facade and we have the Mithril with us. Is it in my key items? I think it is, but I'm not sure. Let's take a look. No, it's not in my key items, but um, you do have the Mithril with you. So, uh, it might be in my raw materials. Nope, I don't see it. Nope. Well, the point is you have the Mithril with you um, now that you're going to the facade. And when you go up to it and inspect it this time, it looks a little cooler in the evening, I think. Huh. Well, this is a pickle. I mean, we have what we need, but how are we supposed to give it to him? Do we have to, like, offer it to him or something? Whoa. I guess it's talking again. Mithril! Uh, I guess it's opening its mouth. Throw the Mithril in, Duke! I didn't say throw yourself in, Duke. Maybe it sucked me in, I don't know. But, uh, I guess we're inside Gaia Cave now. Whoa, there's monsters in here. Ah, you guys get out of here. Okay, um, the monsters in here are mostly s the same as the ones that you've been facing lately. Uh, namely, mole bears and that sort of thing. There are a couple of new enemies, but we'll be getting to them in a second. Excuse me, there's only one new enemy. And he's right up here. The Ice Spy. Um, let me test something real quick. That's what I thought. And, uh, sword does what? Ow. Quit it. Ow. Stop. Okay, the sword is effective against them. But they're completely immune to jab trading, dra bleh, jab trait weapons. So, be careful of that. 
Um, and as you approach them, they will close their eyes and then they'll shoot laser beams at you, so you might want to be careful of that. But otherwise, they're not too terribly hard to deal with. Um, do I want to go up here yet? Yes, I do. Okay, this is a... Ow. Looks like a fire seal. So let's get Salamander out real quick. I'm going to cast with the sword, even though I'm not supposed to. Oops. Ah. There we go. It is a fire seal. And I'm severely hurt from that, but oh well. And we've got a couple of chests over here. And inside this chest, we get the most important item pre the end of um, Grand's Castle. That being marble. Now, I know I got some marble earlier from a mushroom drop, but that was obviously really lucky. Drop. Um, you're guaranteed to get a marble out of that chest every single time you go here. And why that's useful will be covered as soon as I uh, get the other useful item in Gaia Cave. But for now, um, well, we're a little bit busy. We have to get through here first in order for me to show what the other useful item is. So let's head through here. Um, like I said, the eye spies aren't terribly difficult to defeat. I think um, if you're focusing on magic, you have to use um, Salamander or Undine Elemental Magic because I think they're completely immune to Wisp, but I'm not quite certain on that. So let's continue. Uh, oh, this part. Um, the cave, as you can tell from the whole fact that the beginning of it is um, the face and the face comes to life, the cave is alive, so these rocks will move periodically, and if you uh, let one run into you, well, for now it isn't doing anything, but if you let one like squish you between like a wall and something, like if I was to somehow be able to get up there, I would take damage, so you don't want that. I'm going to try to get through both of these at once, because uh, I'm pretty sure they're both slash traits, so here we go. Ah, I missed. Die. Okay. So here's this one. Um, let's just follow it up. Whoa. Stay away from me, guys. Ugh, that one almost got me. I think I can do everything up here for now, but I'm not quite certain, so let's find out. Uh, oh, that's a fire seal. Okay. Salamander, and I'm doing it with the bow this time. Not gonna take any chances. Don't want to end up at 53 HP again, or something ridiculous like that. Okay, so let's just uh, come up here, grab this treasure chest, and inside is an animal hide. Not too important, but eh, you take what you can get, you know. Um, so recently, I was um, I got my Essentially what we did around um, the second exam for my psychology class, here, and here's another marble by the way, you can get two marbles here, so that's uh, pretty nice. Um, what we did for my psychology class is we had our term paper right around when we had exam two. And um, for the term paper, what we had to do, we had to do it on either um, on learning processes, and we had to classify a behavior from our life or the life of someone we know or something like that. We had to take a behavior that they learned and we had to classify it as like classical or operant conditioning and if this um, if you don't aren't in like a psychology class it's probably is meaningless to you but basically we just had to classify the behavior and all that sort of stuff. Here's the insectors again. Get your sight out of here. Um, we had to classify the behavior and um, figure out exactly like what um, it was and there was a bunch of other stuff about it so um, and I wrote the paper in such a way that it was kind of like how I used to write my English papers for my um, English class in 12th grade because I had a really good English teacher in 12th grade um, she taught me a whole lot and um, she taught me a bunch about how my writing style could improve so I've tended to um, kind of emulate what she taught me. Um, in this chest we got a fours and an iron. That's the other important item, so um, after I um, get through the rest of this cave, I'm going to go and take care of the marble and the fours and the iron. So, put that. Anyway, um, so I wrote the paper in such a way that it was kind of emulating how my style was when I wrote in 12th grade, which has, uh, well, this one kind of moves don't think you move it up yourself, but eh. Um, so I've 
I wrote the paper kind of like emulating that style. And I wasn't exactly sure how well that would um, go over with the teachers um, because of the fact that um, like I didn't know the teacher very much. I think you have to push this one, or either that or it moves by itself, and I'm not exactly certain. Hey, let me out. Oh, uh, it's not going to let me out right now. It will now, but it uh, it's kind of like a whole... Like, oh, I'm not going to let you out right now. But um, anyway, I kind of am emulating that style, and I didn't know how well it would go over with the teachers because of the fact that they didn't really specify how um, they wanted the paper to go. Hmm, I wonder what this is. I'll continue in a second. Whoa. Huh. Another spirit. Well, I would imagine. I mean, it's not like most people end up going through Gaia Cave. What? You were expecting maybe some kind of, um, princess to come and rescue you or something? Oh, that's too bad. Well, if you go with me, you'll get to see plenty of ladies. Duke tends to draw the ladies in, so, uh... Yeah, yeah, you can come with us. We're gonna need you anyway, so... I think it's a but thou must situation if you say no, so... Yeah, and so do I. We have to go rescue Elena. One of the, our lady friends, so... He'll be happy. We get Gnome and Earth Spirit. That one's, um, pretty useful. It's, uh, got an added effect of Petrify, which is probably one of the most detrimental status ailments in the game to enemies or to you, depending on who gets hit by it. Um, and he has a defense up support spell, so those are both pretty nice. Uh, and in this room, what I was talking about before, this is the room where you have to uh, use Gnome, because this is an Earth um, seal. So you get your Gnome out, stick uh, your weapon of choice, and shoot it. There you go. And then you've gotten through. So let's grab this treasure real quick. And then head this way. Now, um, to continue my story a little bit, um, I kind of wrote it, when I wrote it that way, I kind of wrote it with something of a sense of humor, because that's um, how my style was when I was um, writing in 12th grade. Um, and that whole style, I didn't know if they would take it like, oh, well, um, this is kind of humorous, so it's kind of a, a good thing, or if they would take it as a bad thing. Well, as it turns out, I got the, the paper back, and um, I ended up getting a perfect grade on it. So um, that was pretty nice. I guess that um, my worries were for nothing, because um, I, I honestly thought that I wasn't going to get a good grade on it. So we're on the other side of Guy's facade. This relief isn't looking so good. He's kind of missing his jaw there. Ugh. Um, I'm going to pray to this mana goddess, and then what I'm going to do now is, now that we've gotten through Guy Cave, I'm going to take the Forzna Iron and the marble that we got inside the cave, and I'm going to take it back, all the way back, through Mush Boom Forest. I'm probably just going to run straight through the enemies and not bother killing them, um, because I'm already two levels higher than I should be. Um, I'm going to take the materials that we got in the cave, and I'm going to take them all the way back through the mushroom forest to that potted plant back near Wendell. Now the reason for this is because I have some forging to do. So I'm going to go do that, and then I think I will meet you guys back as soon as I get inside of the hothouse. So I'm going to go take care of that, and I'll be right back.